Hi there, I'm Eusebio Jacan, and in this video I will showcase, using a real-life scenario, the power of MCP servers when leveraged by UiPath Langraph coded agents, all hosted and governed within the UiPath platform. MCP, which stands for Model Context Protocol, is not just a box to be checked. It's a standout feature, I would say, and maybe even more important than that. It truly shines within the UiPath ecosystem. Now, even if as of today, MCP hasn't even blown out its first candle yet, it's quite new, it went viral and got accelerated adoption. However, it is misunderstood most of the time. Hence, I will start with a super brief case for MCP. And the history, it all starts with an LLM. And you now LMs are smart, can respond to questions, can predict the next thing, but are not really useful in the sense they cannot really do something for you, like fill a form, send a message, pay the bills for that matters. For that, LM need tools. And you know, it's that saying that an LLM is as useful or as meaningful as the tools that it has access to. And each tool is a different language, a different implementation. One needs to understand the service APIs, the business logic of those API fields. It requires custom implementation. And even if the API changes, then the int integration needs to be updated as well. So yes, it is smart. It is rather useful, but hard to build and maintain. And this is where MCP comes into play because it offers a standardized, hence the name protocol, standardized way to interact with services and applications. And agents and LMs can do that without worrying about how each service is implemented behind the scenes. There are three options within UiPath to build or host or bring an MCP server. One is to build and host an UiPath MCP server in a no-code fashion by adding tools like RPA, agents, API, and so on. Another option is to take a Python code that implements an MCP server and bring that within the UiPath platform via pack and publish similar to coded agents. Another option is to take an existing one, an existing MCP server, and bring that within the UiPath platform via a command. I will demonstrate how one can leverage a local MCP server or an external MCP server for end-to-end -end automation and that processes payment requests, like making a payment, issuing refunds, sending invoices directly through email. It interprets each message, performs the right action, and responds with the outcome. And this is all without human intervention. So this is supposed to be uh, dynamic, trusted, and fully autonomous. And let's put that we have this uh, situation. We have a product that is called uh, Code Editor Plus. And we have a customer that requests to have four of these products and will say, let me know what are the next steps. Once it sends this message, it will be picked up and we will parse that email and send that email parse to the agent. Let's go to the agent just to see what happens behind the scenes. This is our agent. Let's see the diagram for this. So firstly, we will prepare the input, obviously, and the next step would be to understand the email. So this is the email, just the one that you've seen in Outlook. It has to label it as, for instance, in this case, as it is a payment, a payment flow, and it labels it correctly. The next part is to trash the email slide to make sure that the email is legit and we can proceed with the action. And for this, it triggers a local MCP server and it calls a few tools like, is the email valid? For instance, this is a low code written in Python that is pub back and published to UiPath. Once this is validated, so it's, it is successful, then 
from this one, it will go to handle transaction. This one, see, yes. And this will call another server, which is Stripe, and would call a few tools like list the products. Another one would be list the prices, list the customers and so on, up until it would create a payment link. And the, the answer will be, dear Eusebio, thank you for interest. Here is your payment link for this. I will copy this link, paste it. I'm the customer now. I received the, the link. I'll say, here's my email, populate it and really make this payment. Okay. And once I'm back to the vendor choose, then I will see this transaction here, a payment of $200 and then some for those four products that the customer wanted to, to buy. And let's say that we have this policy that within 30 days, one can make a refund, no question asked. Yeah, let's do just that. We'll create a new email. I will say refund request. And I will take the transaction ID just to have it. Let me compose the email. Okay, I'll say, please refund this transaction for whatever reason. Okay, and now I will start the process again, which will trigger, because we will see the email will trigger another process. While this executes, let me show you how we've set up the MCP servers. We have two of them. One is a local one, which is this one, which exposes three tools. The tools refresh it well, until it, we have three tools. One is to check the, if the uh, email is valid, like it's not a temporary email or something else. To mark an email in our local storage to say this is blacklisted and to check if the refund was done in the same day for the same customer since we probably want to limit this. The way this looks into the code is that I have a Python code here with several tools like is a valid email, mark email, and check the same day refund. You can see these are the three tools that we see here. Also, we want to use a Stripe MCP server to access all of these tools. For this, it is uh, even more uh, easy to do. We have this official MCP server from Stripe with this command, and we copy this command, edit. So we have this command here, we paste this secret key if you want, and we are done, ready to, to be used. Okay. Let's go back to the jobs view and see if, if the refund was successful. So we can see the input here was please refund this transaction. This was the ask from the customer. Now, if you look what the agent does here in this diagram, it goes through the same steps. However, at understand email part, it labels it differently. It labels it as refund, not payment, which is correct. And sends this state to the next one in line, which is to check the email. This, All right, we'll go here, which will trigger again the local MCP server to check if that email is not blacklisted and it's not a temporary email to see if it's legit. And if that is successful, so if this tool call is successful and we are allowed to move on, then it will move on to the next one, to the next node, which is to handle the transaction, which spin up again the Stripe MCP server and it selected a different set of tools. Let's see what tools it selected. Uh, second load. So it listed the customers, this the payment intent, so on and so forth, up until it created a refund. And the email for that is, dear Eusebio, thank you for contacting us. I will write to confirm that your refund is successful for this one with this transaction. Now, if you look at the transactions, let's see the magic. This one got refunded and also the customer gets that email. For now, I keep it in the draft for the demo purposes, but this is the kind of email that the customer would receive. And yeah, this would demonstrate how we can leverage local and external 
MCP server for a real use case. And MCP is expected you know, to accelerate, to unlock a range of use cases. And we do know that the real magic will happen once, once this gets into the hands of the customers. Thank you.